So I'm re-recording today's lecture for Stephen, who was out doing some good works around the world, from what I understand. Um, and we'll also finish up some slides that we didn't get to. Those slides were assigned for homework, so all you need to do is watch this and copy this down, and more importantly, understand the ID behind it. And that will cover that part of the homework check for you. Um, last class, we left off at um, looking at a uh, basic circuit and how do we measure using an ohmmeter, ammeter, or voltmeter the uh, physical properties, the electrical properties of a circuit. And we talked about last time, we have to hook up a voltmeter is in parallel. And we tend to color code our wires when we're doing these things. So the red wire would go up to our positive side of the circuit and our black wire on our voltmeter will go to the negative side of the circuit. Um, so volts is measured in, in parallel. If you look down to the bottom here for a current, um, we need to measure current in series. So we actually have to cut open our circuit and insert an ammeter someplace in our circuit. All right. And so an ammeter is measured in series with these two, with the other element. Which means, in series means that the current will flow through our first device, throw, flow through our meter, and go back to our battery. That's what is happening with the current in a series circuit. In parallel, on the other hand, we've got a voltage right here for our device, voltage is across the resistor, um, and in parallel, we'll get the same voltage across our meter. For resistance, all we need to do we actually need to physically take the resistance or whatever uh, device we're measuring out of the circuit completely, and we need to use an ohmmeter to measure it, all right, just like that. Very easy to do. We show, demonstrated that in class and did a couple basic calculations. Parallel circuits. What is a parallel circuit? Well, I'm going to start out with a simple 12-volt circuit here. Um, and up in the top left corner, I have a 30 ohm resistor for a very simple circuit. Let's just do a quick calculation up there to practice. Well, if I've got 12 volts for, and this is what we call my source voltage. My source voltage is 12 volts. We need to know how to draw uh, voltage arrows and current arrows. And so a current uh, voltage arrow is going to be an open-headed arrow. And it will point towards the positive side of the circuit. And this is the negative side. Um, and that's a 12 volt voltage arrow. Current current flows through this circuit, and what I'll be using is um, I'm assuming that we're going to use electrons for our our charge carrying um, particles, which are negatively charged, and negative charges will flow from the negative side of the battery and they'll be attracted to the positive side. And so they'll start here, and they'll work their way around in a counterclockwise fashion in this particular circuit. If you're using, po uh, if you're using positive charges to represent current, well, positive charges start on the positive side of the battery, and they, and they want to uh, get away from that positive side. They're repelled by the positive side, and they'll be attracted towards the negative side. So for a positive carrier, if we were to assume current is positive, we would do that. For negative charges, we assume current goes this way, for negative charges. Like I said, it doesn't matter. Ben Franklin, by the way, assumed that they were positive charges, but he didn't really, uh, and then later on, whoever came up with electrons decided to call those negative, and it turns out those are the things that tend to move more so than the positive protons do. So unfortunately, Ben Franklin per, uh, uh, set, set a rule, set a standard that was uh, flipped uh, 100 years later, and we're sort of stuck with two different ways of looking at current. It doesn't really matter which way you choose. Um, I tend to look at uh, negative charges because it's, it's more, I think, uh, physical to see the electrons moving. So I'm going to have my current coming around this way. And I'm going to call this IS for my source. Um, coming out of my battery, my source is my battery, my power source, power supply. So you can think of the S as supply or source. So what is the, what is the voltage? Um, in my resistor for this little circuit. Well, we can use Ohm's law for that, which is V equals IR. Or if we need the current, we need to solve for I. I equals V over R. I have 12 volts divided by 30 ohms. 
And if you divide that, uh, well, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Divide that by 10 is 0.4 amps. So in this circuit over here, we have our source current, IS equals 0 0.4 amps flowing counterclockwise in the circuit if we're using negative charges. If you're using positive charges to show it, it's going clockwise in the circuit. That's all you have to do. Um, and the voltage across my resistor, well, it's uh, what? It's 12 volts. Um, and here's why it's 12 volts. And I'm sorry with this uh, configuration on the smart board, um, videotaping this, I can't show you my probes, um, probing my circuit for voltage, but I'm going to draw some black and red lines in here. So if I start my voltage probe here for the red probe and down here for the black probe, if I were to slide my red probe along the top, since I'm moving through wire and has no, the wire has no resistance, my voltage shouldn't change. Voltage only changes because you're doing work. It's voltage is related to the potential energy in the circuit, that potential hill that we have that's 12 volts high. And if we're not doing any work, we're not going to use up any of that energy. And so as I slide my, my probe along this wire, I'm not moving through any part of the circuit that's doing any of the work, so I'm not going to lose any of my voltage. In the same sense, on the bottom, I'm just moving through a wire which has theoretically no resistance. I'll do this in black because I use a black wire for this bottom side. And if I, as I slide my probe, probe over, so here's, here's my voltage probe. I'm going to probe it here. And here's my other voltage probe. I'm going to probe here. So I slid them over to those two points. And because I was sliding through wire which has no resistance, I do not change my voltage. I do not drop any voltage, this is what we say because I did not do any work, because they are essentially frictionless, if you want to think of it that way. No resistance is similar to being frictionless. Um, and therefore, my voltage doesn't change, which means my voltage on the resistor is still pointed upwards, and it's still plus 12 volts. Now, let's take a look at the circuit down below. What I've done is I've added a second resistor, and I'm going to label these. Here's R1 from above, and now we have R2. Um, and the question is, what happens when I connect a second resistor? Here's, I'll just put a little solder on my two junctions there. I just added another resistor. You can see it's in parallel because these things are parallel to each other. That's why we call it a parallel circuit. The question is, how do we evaluate what's going on in the circuit? Um, and the key is, um, there's something special about parallel circuits. Something stays the same in parallel circuits. Something to do with the resistance, voltage, power, or current. So let's figure out what that is. Well, I'm going to go back up to our probes. And you remember I had a, I started out with my voltage probe probing at that part of the circuit up above and down here I have my other probe. And if I probe that and those probes are connected to my meter through a couple of wires right over to my voltmeter, um, I would measure 12 volts because I'm right over at the battery. And once again, I'm going to slide my probe down, down the wire here. So there's my positive probe. I slid it over. So as, my, if I, as I slide my probe over, I'm moving through wire, which has no resistance, so I drop no voltage. So my voltage is still reading 12 volts. I'm going to do the same thing for the probe down at the bottom. I'm going to slide this voltage probe over uh, to the right. And so between my upper and lower probe, my red and black probe, um, I've moved only through wire, so I have not dropped any voltage, so the voltage has not changed, and so I'm still at 12 volts there. And I could uh, slide my probe right to here, and right to here, and once again, I have not changed my voltage because I've only been going through ideal wire, which has no resistance, so no work is done, so I'm not going to drop any of my uh, voltage potential, and, and so I'm still at the same voltage. So at this point in the circuit, my voltage right here is still going to be point, is facing upward as it was over on the left side. Let me draw my left side voltage. Here's my voltage arrow. I'm at 12 volts is my source voltage or supply voltage. Um, and I'm going to have the same value right here. I haven't dropped any voltage yet. I've only been through, going through wires. Wires do not drop voltage. So my voltage here for voltage 1 will still be 12 volts easy. All right. Um, well, as long as we're here, 
um, we can figure out the current going through this resistor quite easily. I'll do that in blue. Um, my current through resistor 1 is just going to be using Ohm's law. It's the voltage in 1 divided by the resistance in 1. And so I'm going to have what? I've got 12 volts divided by 30 ohms. And look at that. It's the same mass as we had above. So I end up with, what, 0 0.4 amps again. So it doesn't seem like anything changed so far. So I've got current. Uh, and we'll figure out in a second which way that current is flowing. Um, but I've got 0.4 amps flowing through that, that uh, part of the circuit. So let's take a look at through R2. Well, I, well, how do I figure out R2? I'm going to use my voltage probes again. So I'm going to continue to slide my voltage probe over this way now. So here's my voltage probe slid over to this point for my positive side of the probe. Here's my negative probe right here. I'm going to slide it up to here and probe my wire right here to measure it. Now, as I slide these probes along wire, which is ideal, no resistance, no work done, it's like being a frictionless surface I'm sliding over. It doesn't take any work to do, to do anything, no non-conservative work. So when that's the case, uh, my voltage doesn't change. My original 12 volts over at my source continues to stay at 12 volts as I pass my probes along this wire. So over on the right side of the circuit then, I'm still at a voltage. My voltage at point 0.2 is still 12 volts. And it's still pointed upward as well. All right. How could my, as I'm sliding along, how could my voltage flip upside down on me? You know, if we're 12 volts positive on the left side of the, of the circuit, and as we slide along, our voltage doesn't change. It's got to still point up the whole way through our circuit. So it's pointing upward in the middle part of the circuit. It's pointed upward on the right side of the circuit. All right, so that's our voltage. And once again, we can calculate the current over here. The current is V over R, so it's V2 over R2. Well, it's 12 volts over 30 ohms. And once again, that's 0 0.4 amps. So um, it looks like by adding another branch to the circuit, um, the original 30 ohm resistor is still carrying um, 0 0.4 ohms, just as we saw above. And for the right part of the circuit, this new right part of the circuit, we're still, we've got 0.4 amps over there. Um, that's very interesting. Um, now let's see what's going to happen with the direction of the current. Well, current, we're using negative, I'm going to use negative charges again. Negative charges want to flow from um, the negative side. They're going to flee away from the negative. They're going to be repelled by the negative side of the battery. And they'll be attracted to the positive side of the battery. So I'm going to have current flowing here through my circuit. Here's my source current. Now, it's going to, the current's going to reach this junction. All right. When it reaches this junction, the current's going to make a decision. It's going to say, all right, I'm going to, I can go down either path or I can split amongst the two paths. And current, the rule for current, current flows towards the, through the least resistance. All right, and it's, it'll work out proportionally when we do this. So if we have one resistance that's 10 times um, the other, then uh, one-tenth of the current will flow through the, the 10, time, uh, 10 times uh, branch. So in this case, we have two equal branches. So we'd expect if there's two equal branches and current has a choice, well, if the path is equal on both, well, let's send half the current each way then. So I'm going to send half of my current this way, and that's going to be I1. And I'm going to send half of it this way, and that's I2. Now, as it turns out, that means that I1 should equal I2. And sure enough, we already figured that out from over here. We have I2 equals 0 0.4 amps, and we have I1 equals 0 0.4 amps. Now, um, this current will continue to flow around here. I2 continues to flow up and around. I1 continues to flow up right there. And they will merge together at this point and continue because they're trying to get over towards that. They're being attracted by the positive side of the battery here. Um, the electrons are attracted towards positive voltage, and they're repelled by the negative voltage. So they combine together to I1 plus I2, which equals, once again, our, our source current. So our, our current continues to flow as if it's flowing through this battery, and it continues to loop through the circuit. 
and it, it keeps on flowing and flowing and flowing as long as our chemistry in our battery provides electrons and the chemistry to do that. So this is a continual process that keeps on going over and over and over again. Remember what current is, it's a flow, and this is a flow, this is, these are circular, circuit, circuitous paths flowing in each portion of the circuit based on how much resistance there is and our height of the hill. The higher the hill, the faster these will, the, the faster the current will flow in the pipes and, uh, and we'll have more current as a result. Um, so there's our solution for this first uh, circuit. Now, parallel circuit, so what happens here? Um, well, I said there would be something that stayed the same and something would be different. Well, what stays the same here in parallel circuits, the voltages, the voltages in parallel are the same. That's the key idea. All right. And the currents, the currents that are in parallel divide proportionally based on the size of the currents. In this case, they were equal, equal resistances, and so they, that meant, that's mean the sent proportionally. In this case, the two uh, resistances were equal, so it was an equal split. So currents divided in proportion to the resistance in each branch, and the voltages remained the same in each branch. And that's true for all parallel circuits. Let's try out that process here. Um, okay, so we've got five volts over on the left side. I'm going to draw a voltage arrow. Five volts is my source voltage, and you should label all these. Um, once again, uh, voltages are all equal in parallel, so my, my V1, this is going to be, we call R1, R2, and R3, so we'll have V1, V2, or V3. So my V1 is also going to be 12 volts. My V2 is going to be 12 volts. And my V3 is going to be 12 volts. Voltages are equal in parallel circuits. How do we figure out our currents? Well, um, let me just draw my current arrows in to start with. I've got a source current that's going to flow out of the battery here. And it's going to split off some current to go through resistor 1. I'll call that I1. Now it's going to have some current going through here. Now this current will split up in two more branches into I2 and into I3. All right. Well, guess how big this current arrow is here? It's I2 plus I3. All right, as the current I3 comes back around, remember we, and for current, electrons are not lost or used up in our devices. They go through the circuit all the way back around to the battery and, and participate in that chemical reaction. We do not lose any electronics in our device, our, our electrons or charge carriers in our device. They're not burned up or something in these they actually pass through and do work as they're passing through. So the electrons flow through circuit. So electrons are conserved, none are lost. So electrons are not consumed here. They, just, they travel through the circuit and re recombine over in the battery, and the battery through its chemistry, sends out more to replace them. And so here's our I3 coming around here. Um, I2 is going to continue up the branch here through our device and power our device and do its work. These two, these two will merge into a larger current, which is I2 plus I3. And over on the left branch, we have I1 is continues to flow upward and do the work inside the device. And as they merge at this, at this node or this joint, um, I've got my I source is going to be the combination of these, I1 plus I2 plus I3. All right, so that's um, overall a little bit of the math that's going on here and the, the physics that's going on here. So let's actually calculate the values here. Um, I know the voltage um, for each device is 12 volts. Easy to, easiest thing to do in a, in a parallel circuit is to write down the voltages. They're all the same. 
Uh, and I know I'm given, in this case, the resistance in each branch. And so all I have to do, if I want to calculate I1, just use Ohm's law, V1 over R1, my voltage is 12 volts over 5 kilo ohms. I'm sorry, it's 5 volts over 5 kilo ohms. Well, 5 divided by 5 is 1, so, but it's not 1 amp. We've got a K down at the bottom. It's going to pop up top as a milli. So we have, I've got 1 milliamp for I1. Um, for I2, I can do the same math. It's V2 over R2, which is 5 volts over 10 kilo ohms. Well, if I've doubled the denominator here, my current will drop in half, so I've got half of a milliamp. Well, this makes sense in another fashion as well. I told you that uh, the current is going to be divided up proportionally based on the sizes of the of the uh, resistors. The first, res the lowest resistor on here is the five kilo ohm. So we'd expect more current to go in the five kilo ohm than we would in the ten kilo ohm, and there would be more in the ten kilo ohm than the fifteen kilo ohm. And given that the ten kilo ohm is twice as large as the five kilo ohm and that current's going to go through the path of least resistance, we'd expect twice as much current to go in the 5 as in the twice the size resistance of the 10. And sure enough, we've got 1 milliamp going through the 5, and we've got a half a milligram, milliamp going through the 10. All right. And for I3, we can do similar math, and we can use a similar um, idea. In fact, I'll, I'll take a look at this. Well, if the 15 kilo ohm is three times the five kilo ohm, um, we'd expect one third of the current to go through that three times larger resistance. So I'd expect this one down up here to be one third of the milliamp. So it's one third milliamp. And if you do the Ohm's law calculation here, I've got five volts over 15 kilo ohms. You'll see that's correct. So I've got a third of a milliamp here. All right. And so those, all these merge back together over here. So I've got one milliamp from I, from I1 plus a half a milliamp from I2 plus a third of a milliamp from I3. So my, my source voltage or source current, or my total current, if you want to call it that, we could call it, use a T for total. Sometimes you'll see that being used, is one plus one half plus one third, which is one and two thirds milliamps. Okay? So here's a, here's a new question for you to think about. What's my equivalent resistance for this entire circuit? We know the resistance of each branch, but what does, if we were to take a look at these two points here, our battery is sort of looking into this entire circuit. And it's, it's providing a five voltage of uh, potential um, that's our potential difference that it's uh, providing to um, power our circuit and to cause those electrons to flow, drop down that steep hill, um, that energy hill. Um, so I want to know what the equivalent resistance it sees. Well, that's easy enough to figure out um, from our numbers up here because we know that if we have our source voltage, well, it should equal our source current times are equivalent resistance. By the way, sometimes you'll also see equivalent resistance called the total resistance of a circuit. You'll see these are interchangeable, these two terms. So I actually know the source voltage is 5 volts, and I also know our source current is, what is it? Uh, it's 1 and 2 thirds uh, milliamps. So I can say our, our equivalent is our source voltage divided by our source current, and we're solving for, for R Q. Um, and we've got 5 volts over 1 and 2 thirds milliamps. And when you do this math, you come out with 3 kilo ohms. Now that's an interesting result, because if you compare our total resistance, our REQ, which is R total, it's only 3 kilo ohms. That's smaller than any one of these three resistors. And the question is why? Well, here's why. Uh, the current in this circuit, if I were to take a look at each one of these individually, I have a, I'd have 5 kilo ohms of resistance for one, and that pulls out so much current. If I were to swap that instead for a single little circuit with 10 kilo ohms in it, well, I'd pull half the current through that one um, compared to the original. And if I were to take a single uh, resistor and plug it in of the 15 kilo ohm size, I'd get a third of, the, a third of a milliamp. 
Now, if I were to plug these in parallel, though, each one that I plug in in parallel, um, the battery doesn't really care how many I plug in parallel. It's still going to provide 5 volts to all those. What's happening, though, every one I plug in, it draws a little bit more current from my battery. If I plug in a third one, it plugs in a little bit more. A fourth one will plug in a little bit more. A fifth one will plug in a, will, will pull a little bit more. So every one I do pulls more and more resistance. So the battery, it sort of sees, as it's looking in, it says, all right, I, 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 I know there's something out there. I'm very, short, I'm very short-sighted, though. I, I can't see things at a long distance. I know there's stuff out there pulling resistance from me, and I'm going to assume there, it's one, one item pulling resistance. And it doesn't know if it's one item, or in this case, we have three up here. So it just says, let's just lump it together, and just, we'll just call it one item. And that uh, voltage supply says, all right, if that one item is pulling one and two-thirds resist one and two-thirds of milliamps resistance, that, that one item must be a three kilo ohm resistor on there. It doesn't really know that there's actually a 5, 10, and a 15. Um, so really what, it, what happens is mathematically for a parallel circuit, and this is a very important formula, and we've seen something similar for uh, springs put in series, we've got our R equivalent equals 1 over 1 over R1, we've got a complex um, fraction here, plus 1 over R2, plus 1 over R3. All right, that's the formula for equivalent resistance. Um, by the way, you will see um, in some cases, and I'll do this on the next page, um, you will see um, in general here for a one that has R1, R2, R3, dot, 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 on out to Rn, our R equivalent would be 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus dot, 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 all the way out to our nth resistor. What happens if we have two resistors? Um, this is a common question that will come up. Um, our, our equivalent will be 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. This is small enough. I wouldn't want to do this with any other, with three or more. This is just really a pain in the butt. Um, but we can actually simplify this uh, complex fraction, get rid of the complex fraction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply top and bottom by R1, R2. And I know you guys are really good with fractions because you're great math students. And what I end up with is, is, is R1, R2 over, um, this R1 cancels with that, that R2 cancels with that, and what I've got is R1 plus R2. So that's, that's our formula for the total. A, 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 a simplification, um, get rid sort of a complex fraction. You'll see this popping up. Uh, and you've probably already seen this pop up in a couple of the multiple choice questions on the on the um, the diagnostic questions on the diagnostic quiz one. So parallel circuits, our summary. Um, our voltages are same throughout the circuit. Same voltage here, here, and here. That's what's same about the circuit. What's different is the currents. I'm going to have different currents. I one, I two. I3. Um, the, the bigger the resistor, the less current you're going to get. The smaller resistor is going to get more current. Current likes to flow um, more so through the, the path of least resistance than of the higher resistance. And it will divide it up, be divided up proportionally, but reverse proportionally. All right. So, and remember that our current does not, our current, which our charge carries our electrons, um, or you can think of it as, as a positive charges. They do not get sucked up anywhere in the circuit and disappear. They actually flow through, go to the battery, and the battery flows through more, and the battery provides more, and the battery provides more. They do not get stuck in our devices. Nothing gets lost in these devices in terms of our charges. The charges flow through the devices. As they're flowing through, they'll do work. Um, and the work that we're talking about typically, especially for resistors, um, is as they resist, that means they're having lots and lots of collisions on an atomic level, and they're generating heat. That's what comes out of resistors. That's the only work that's really done. It's, it's, it's uh, lost through heat through these resistors. Of course, there are other devices which are much more useful than resistors, like light bulbs give you mostly heat and a little bit of light, too, along the way. Um, 
but the but the chargers themselves pass through the device, so they don't get, they don't stop at the device. They continue on back over to the battery, and they keep on going back through the circuit over and over again. All right, let's take a look at series circuits then. Um, same circuit up above here. I've got 12 volts, 30 ohms. So let's just and remember this one we had a voltage over here. Our voltage at our resistor was also 12 volts um, because we don't lose any voltage through the wires. Um, and we've calculated the current on, on this was 0 0.4 amps. One thing that I did not calculate on this was the power. How do I calculate power? And I need you to go back through the last set of examples and calculate power for each one of the devices, and including the, uh, the battery. Look at the source. Um, and I'll do it on, on this one to show you uh, my example. Uh, so my power in resistor 1 is just, remember, power is V times I, so V1 times I1. It's also I squared, I1 squared times R1, or it's V1 squared over R. And we went through the derivation where these second two came from. Um, so the power in this little simple circuit over here is just, my voltage is 12 volts times 30 ohms. So 12 times 30, well, 3 times 12 is, is 36, so I've got 3,600. Uh, I'm sorry, 360 watts. By the way, uh, if this is a resistor, uh, 360 watts <coughs> is quite a bit of heat. That's like your toaster set on the light mode is what I would call that. All right, so that would be a, give you a light piece of toast. Um, so that's, that's quite a bit of uh, wattage putting out. Remember, the old-fashioned, really bright light bulbs you use in your house were only 100 watts, and those put out quite a bit of heat. You would burn yourself, uh, uh, like a third-degree burn on your hand if you, if you touch one of those bulbs. Right, which one's worse, a third degree or, or a first degree? Whatever the least kind of burn is, it would... It would uh, it would uh, give you a minor burn. This would give you a, a, a bad burn. It would, your skin would be blistering if you touched that one. All right, so let's go ahead. And let, now we've got a, a little bit of different configuration here, and we've got to figure out how to uh, think about solving this circuit. This is a series circuit, and in a series circuit, um, something remains the same once again, um, and it's either voltage or current. In the parallel circuit, voltage remains the same. Well, in this circuit, well, where's our current going in here? Well, we've got our positive side, negative side. Our current's going to be flowing around through this way, so I'm going to draw my current arrow. Here's my I. Now, does my current split up? Does it have any branches to split up? No, it doesn't. So all my current turns this corner, goes through all this device, passes through. Remember, current, the charges pass through the device. They don't get sucked up. They don't stay there. They continue on, and they're going to pass through this device, do their work, generate their heat. And they're going to continue on and go back to the battery, and they're going to recycle and keep on going over and over and over again. That chemical reaction is going to keep on pumping out electrons and pulling them the other side, over the other side and recombining to, to work out your chemistry and use up that chemical reaction, and it's going to continue to provide those electrons. All right? So what remains the same then in these things is the current. So I have, this is my resistor number two. This is resistor number one. Well, my I1 is the same as my source current, as is, I'm sorry, this is I2, as is I1. That's the part that stays the same. The I stay the same throughout the circuit. The current stays the same in a resistance circuit. So if we can figure out the current on the circuit, we could actually multiply current times voltage or, or uh, current times resistance to get the voltage of each one of these things. Now, how would we figure out the voltages on these things? So how do we calculate the voltages on, on these circuits? Well, here's the analogy I'm going to use. Um, for a circuit like this, there, there's two ways we can look at this. Um, first of all, um, a series circuit is also known as a voltage divider. As you recall, um, on our parallel circuit, we were able to divide up the current 
based on the size of the resistances, that the smallest resistance got the smallest got the largest current, and the largest resistance got the smallest current, and they were divided up proportionally. Um, voltage is divided in the same way with these with these circuits. Um, in this case, though, more resistance will re will drop more voltage. It will use up more of your energy. Remember, our voltage is is a representation of our potential energy. It's our um, electric potential. All right. And it's actually energy per unit charge is what voltage is. And so, uh, so that voltage is going to be divided up based on how big the resistor. The more resistor, the more voltage it will be um, consuming out of that 12 volts. So in this case, we have two 30 ohm resistors, and so we'd expect each one of those would have the same amount of voltage. Now let's think about another thing here. Now in the last case, when we put our meter on here, when we measured our voltmeter, here's one probe. And here's another probe. Um, that's 12 volts right there, all right? So we have, a, we have 12 volts there. Now, if I were to slide my red probe over to this position, no change, all right? We've moved through wire. <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, the voltage uh, does not drop through an ideal wire. There's no work being done in that wire. Now, but as soon as I move this probe over to the other side of this resistor, well, resistors are where all the work's being done, and these two resistors. And I'll tell you what, half the work's being done here and half the work's being done here because they're equal resistances. So I'd expect half of my voltage to drop as I pass over the resistor. So I must have a voltage of 6 volts on that resistor. 6 volts. All right, because we've got 30 ohms and 30 ohms, so half our work, half our work. So our work is related to that 12 volts, so we should have half the voltage on each one of these. So we call that a voltage divider relationship. And I'm going to write down a little equation in a moment for you. So we'd expect V2 to be also 6 volts, and we'd expect V1 to be 6 volts. And here's the voltage divider relationship. For series, a series circuit is also known as a voltage divider. And our parallel circuit is also known as a current divider. Um, but it, it, it's, it's dividing up in a sort of reverse way on the, in the parallel circuit. It's really easy to do with a series circuit. So the voltage on resistor 1 is going to equal um, our source voltage times the ratio of what? Well, our resistor 1 value divided by the total resistance in the circuit. All right? So the big question is, what's our total resistance, which is also known as the equivalent resistance in a series circuit. Well, it's easy. It turns out it equals R1 plus R2. All right? So in series circuit, it's very, 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 very easy to figure out the equivalent resistance. You just add up all the resistances. All right? Think of this. Uh, here's, a, here's, a, here's one reason you can think why. Remember what we said. If we have a wire of length L, um, then we would have a, a resistance that's, that's proportional to that length L. Um, and if we were to have another wire that was 1, 2, 3, 4L long, we'd expect this to have 4 times, let's just call that 4 ohms. Let's say this, this one was 1 ohm. All right? So if we were to have a wire 4 times the length, it's 4 ohms. And essentially what's, what we're doing here is we're taking 4 pieces of wire, we're sticking them in series, each of them being 1L long, and what's happening? We're, we're adding up 1 ohm of resistance, with another ohm of resistance, with another ohm of resistance, and another ohm of resistance. All right, they're in series. I just tacked them end, 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 end. Um, so in the same sense, resistors uh, put together in series just add up the resistors. It's like think of them as adding length. We've got a 30-foot cable end to end with another 30-foot cable, 60 feet long, so we'd have twice the resistance. So that's our important formula for the resistance, and so. For our, voltage, uh, for our voltage, let me do this for V1. We had uh, 12 volts, and this is using the voltage divider method to figure out the voltage. We had 12 volts times our resistance 1 is 30 ohms, and our total resistance is 30 ohms plus 30 ohms, which is 60 ohms. So I've got 12 times 30 over 60. And that's 30 over 60 is a half, which is 6 volts. All right? Easy. Um, the other thing we can do to, f to figure out each voltage is if we know that the total resistance 
or the equivalent resistance is 30 plus 30 is 60 ohms, we can actually figure out our source current equals our source voltage divided by our equivalent resistance or our total resistance, which is just 12 volts divided by 60 ohms. And um, 12 divided by 60 is, turns out, 0 0.2 amps. So that means our current flowing through the circuit is 0 0.2 amps. So I've got 0 0.2 amps flowing through here, and I've got 0 0.2 amps flowing through up here. The Th whole way through, I've got 0 0.2 amps. Current doesn't change. In a series circuit, current is constant throughout. In a parallel circuit, voltage is constant throughout. So I've got this, by using my equivalent resistance, I can quickly calculate my, um, my total current being drawn by the circuit. And now I can take 0.2 amps times 30 ohms, and I could say V equals V2 equals I2 R2, um, and that would equal 0.2 amps times 30 ohms. And I get, that's 0.2 times 30 is 6 volts. Same answer we had below. All right, it matches. So these answers match. All right. So two ways you can tackle this. Let's just review. I'll do the next one to review. Um, so there's two ways we can attack, tackle a, a series circuit. Number one, we could treat it as a voltage divider, and we could take our 5 volts in this case for our source voltage and divide it up proportionally amongst our R1, our R2, and our R3. So we'd expect, let's do that real quick. So we'd expect V1 to be, well, in order to do this, we need to know our total voltage. Total voltage in series is what? It's just R1 plus R2 plus R3. So our, our total resistance will be what? 5 plus 10 plus 15 is 30 kilo ohms. Don't you love uh, total resistance in, uh, or equivalent resistance in series circuits? So easy. Um, so we have 30 kilo ohms. I can use that now. Um, to do my voltage dividers. So let's try this method. So my voltage dividers it should be my, my source voltage times my R1 over R total. So I'll show my equation for the first one. So I've got 5 volts times my resistance is 5 kilo ohms divided by my total resistance is 30 kilo ohms. By the way, you can do a little bit of cancellation here. Um, so the kilo ohms cancel. 5 goes into 30 six times, so I get 5 six of a volt, which is 0.83 volts. All right. Um, if you, and that voltage, by the way, is pointed to the left. Here's V1. All right. These voltages are always pointed towards the high side of the circuit. The high side of the circuit is right here, so these voltages should always point towards the high side of the circuit. Our voltage 2 is also across this device here. I'll draw it across the device here. Our V2 will also point up towards the positive side of the battery. And our V2, we can use a voltage divider to do that as well. Our V2 is going to be what? We've got um, 5 volts times 10 kilo ohms over 30 kilo ohms. Um, by the way, if you look at the math here, it's twice as big. This, this uh, ratio here is twice as big as the other. And, of course, we'd expect the voltage in the 10K to be twice that of the 5K because we've got twice as much of our energy being used up here. Remember, voltage relates directly to energy. And so twice as much energy is going to get consumed in this, in this uh, resistor. And remember, that energy, it gets converted into what other form of energy? By consuming, I mean it's being converted into another form. It's going out as heat for a, a plain old resistor. So 5 times 10 over 30, it's actually one-third of 5 or 5 thirds uh, volts, which is 1.67 volts. Uh, let's use the voltage divider to figure out V3. V3 is going to equal uh, my total voltage, which is 5 volts, times a ratio of my 15 kilo ohms divided by 
my total resistance in the circuit is 30 kilo ohms. So 15 divided by 30 is a half, and so half of 5 is 2.5 volts. And the direction of this, once again, the voltage is going to point towards the high side of the circuit, which is up over there. It's going to point towards the positive side of the circuit. So here's my positive negative side of this, this voltage 3. All right. Um, and if you add up these three voltages, well, all of our work is done on these three devices, so they should consume, or remember, and our voltage is, is our, uh, our, our electric potential. Um, um, so it relates directly to our electrical potential energy. So electric potential is the same thing as voltage, and it relates directly to electrical potential, electric potential energy that's stored in that battery. That's our voltage hill, our energy hill. Um, compared to like, potential energy due to gravity. We've got potential energy electric here um, that gives us our voltage. All right, so our voltage of 5 volts, if we think of conservation of energy, if, if voltage is directly related to energy, that energy, um, here's our potential energy, is going get, to getting converted to another form in this circuit. What kind of form? Well, it's work non-conservative. If you want to think about, this is like uh, resistance similar to friction. Or you can think about it on a molecular level, heat, it's turning into heat, which is just vibration. So we're take, taking potential energy in the battery, which is, which is chemical, um, like so chemical uh, energy, stored, stored energy. We start that chemical reaction, we get a, uh, develop an electrical field, which gives us an electric potential energy. And based on the amount of current flowing, um, we can actually, in running them through our devices here and, and whacking through these hard resistances and forming heat, we'll use up all that energy and convert our potential energy, which is our electric potential, is voltage, and that gets converted into, that gets converted into um, our other form of energy, which is thermal energy, or if you want to think about kinetic energy. You can actually calculate how much energy um, uh, per second it's doing uh, by just using your power equation. All right, so we've got voltages. We use the voltage divider here to get all three voltages. Um, let's actually look at this a, a different way, um, and we haven't found our current yet either. Um, we could actually now take any one of these voltages across any one of these resistors and use Ohm's law on V1, V2, or V3, R1, R2, R3, um, and just say I equals V over R and calculate that. I'm going to do it with a source voltage. All right, so I'm going to calculate the source current, which is going to be equal to Vs divided by... Um, my R total, or R equivalent. So I've got 5 volts divided by 30 kilo ohms. And what's 5 divided by 30? It's 1 6. And you'll notice I've got uh, a volt per ohm is an amp. The K is going to flip up the top as a milli, so we got 1 6 of a milliamp. So this circuit is providing our source current, which equals I3, which equals I2, which equals I1. Currents are always equal in a, uh, in a series circuit. The current flows through all these and continues to flow through. We don't lose any electrons along the way. And what we have is one-sixth of a milliamp. All right? Um, and if you want to check yourself, if I were to multiply one sixth of a milliamp, which is my current, times my resistance, v equals, using V equals IR, so I'm going, to use, I'm going to use resistor number three. Let's try this out. Um, my current going through I3, uh, through R3 is uh, one sixth of a milliamp. My, and my, uh, Resistance is 15 kilo ohms. The kilo and the milli cancel, and I've got 15 divided by 6. Did I do this math right? What's 5 divided by 3? Hold on. Let's see. That's a 6. Let me double check this here. So we've got, what do we have here? Um, so I've got 15 divided by 6 is 2.5 volts. That was a close one. Uh, so we've got 2.5 volts. All right. 
So we just used Ohm's law to check our voltage divider result, and they're the same. They better be the same, or else we'd be in trouble. All right, so there's two ways to tackle these types of problems. Um, we've got a, a, a series circuit here. What is same about series circuit is the current remains the same. Um, and the way I tackle this, I can either take the approach of a voltage divider, because we know the voltage is going to divide proportionally, um, directly proportionally. So if I could take, for example, my total resistance of 5 plus 10 plus 15 kilo ohms, which is 30 kilo ohms, total resistance in series is easy to do. And I can use uh, a ratio of the total resistance um, in the denominator and the numerator. I can put my R1, so 5K over 30K, that's going to be one sixth of my voltage. Uh, so I use the voltage divider as one method, and then I can use uh, Ohm's law to pick up the current. Or alternatively, once I know the total resistance, I can look at the total voltage and come up with a source current, uh, which I calculated at one sixth of a milliamp, and then run that one sixth of a milliamp through my entire circuit and use Ohm's law to calculate the voltages, either way. So this is my general circuit here, um, and we've already mentioned here, the, the big thing here is my total resistance is, same thing as my equivalent resistance, those are interchangeable terms, is R1 plus R2 plus dot 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 Rn. All right. And so in summary, we know that the current is saved throughout the circuit. And remember, current is like water going through a pipe. We're not, well, well let's assume they're not uh, leaky pipes here, right? So in our circuit, we have current, uh, current represents a flow of electrons or a flow of charges. And those charges are not lost through the circuit. Whatever comes out this end is going to come out back out that end. All right? The current does not, uh, the charges do not get destroyed anywhere along the way. They go right back over to my battery, and a new one, a new set comes around to replace those, and around and around they go. Um, what is consumed, if you want to think of it as consumption, is our voltage. Our voltage is electric potential, which relates to electric potential energy. Remember, there's a few ways we state this. This is electric potential, is, a, is the other word we have for voltage. And remember, voltage is defined as our, our drop in potential energy due to electric field, that's electric potential energy, per unit charge. And the charge we can get from our current. We can figure out how, much, how, many, how many charges per second, which is charge divided by time, and we can work this out. Um, so our voltage is a representation of our electric potential energy, um, but we have to divide it by Q to get voltage. Um, but that voltage, that's the height of our hill, is going to be divided proportionally amongst our three resistors. And they will point, remember the voltages always point towards the high voltage in the circuit. All right. So the voltage should add up to our source voltage, as do our resistors. All right. So we use voltage divider, or we use uh, equivalent resistance and an equivalent source current to figure these things out. Um, this is just a little comparison chart, uh, just picking up the values from other ones. Uh, feel free to fill that in if you'd like. Kirchhoff's current law, we've, we've uh, been actually using it. Um, you just didn't know that. And it just tells us, um, uh, we've got Kirchhoff's voltage law, and he has a Kirchhoff's uh, current law. Um, the voltage is mean, and, uh, go ahead, have, have fun solving this circuit. Um, tell you what, if you can uh, analyze this circuit and come up with all the circuit values, I'll give you some bonus points. But basically, um, be careful on this, because you notice here our battery is not on the left side of the circuit, it's in the middle, and it's pointed downward to our 8 volts. Our V source is, is 8 volts pointed downwards. All right. So the high side of our circuit is here. And the low point of our circuit is right here. Here's, this is what we'd call zero, 0 volts right there. So our ground would be right there on the circuit. So a little bit of an unusual configuration. 
But if you bent your wires around a little bit, you could rewire this um, so that it looks uh, like a traditional circuit um, um, that I've driven on, dri drawn on the other ones. Um, but basically, what this tells us is, um, if uh, we have, and one thing to remember, all my voltages are gonna point towards um, the high side of the circuit. And here is the high side of the circuit, right here. Here's the high side, and here's the low side. Your battery defines what's, what's high and low here. All right, so all my voltages have to point to the high side. So here's my here's V3 is going to point that way. Um, here's V6 is going to point that way. Um, V1 is going to point that way. V2 is going to point that way. They're all trying to point over towards the high side of the circuit. And here's what uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us. If we were to make a, any loop through our circuit, and let's make this our loop just like this. All right. So the sum of the voltages in any, in any loop have to equal zero volts, all right? And if you want to think about this, remember, voltages represent are very closely related to the potential energy that we're using up. Our, our battery is, is, is essentially a representation that eight volts is a representation of a tall hill that's eight volts high. And, if you, um, and just remember, your voltage equals your potential energy divided by the charge per the, uh, divided by the charge flowing through the circuit. That's how they're related. And the charge in the circuit will be a constant value. Um, and so this eight volts relates to potential energy. And our potential energy, as it flows through this particular hill on the left side of the circuit, um, all that potential energy, eight volts, eight volts will be used up in all of our devices. So if you look at this, as I flow through my circuit, I've got, here's my VS. Um, I'm gonna go through this circle, let me go through the circle uh, um, I'm going to go through the circle, if you don't mind, clockwise. All right. I'm going to start with VS. So I'm, I'm moving downward with the VS. So I've got positive VS. I'm moving against my V3. So I've got minus V3. And I'm moving against my V6. So I've got minus V6. And I'm moving against my R1. So I've got minus V1. And I'm moving against V2. So I've got minus V2. That's the left side of the equation. And that has to equal zero. All right. So what this tells us, we move all the negatives to the other side. Our source voltage is going to is going, which is providing all is the tall hill is going to be eaten up by all these little pieces of the hill that's falling down. Uh, part is going to go to V3 plus V6 plus V1 plus V2. All right. So VS is going to equal V3 plus V6 plus V1 plus V2. If we moved over here, drew another loop. Um, well, let's see, which way are our voltages are going to point on here? Well, the low side of the circuit is here, the high side of the circuit is here. So our voltages should be pointing towards the high side of the circuit. So here's V4. And if we um, go over for onto V8, V8 is also going to be pointed towards the high side of the circuit. So here's V8. I'm sorry, V7. That's R7. So if I were to do use this as my loop for Kirchhoff's voltage loop, I'm going to go through this counterclockwise again. I mean, sorry, clockwise. I'm going to start on the left side. So here I am. I'm going up, up through clockwise through this as I'm passing through my loop. I'm going against V4, so I have negative V4 since I'm moving against it. And here I'm coming around the top side of my loop, and now I'm passing through V7, but I'm going with it, so it's a plus V7. And that should, and then I come back around, and I'm going through this wire. No, wires have no voltage, right? And I come back around, and I'm back to where I started from. So I get minus V4 plus V7. That's my sum of my voltages it's in a loop. That's the left side of my equation. Has to equal zero volts. What's that mean? Let's toss our negatives over to the other side. That means V7 has to equal V4. Well, when have we seen voltages that are equal? Well, voltages are equal if we have circuits in parallel. Well, hello, folks. That's a parallel circuit right there. So these two items are in parallel, so they have to be um, equal to each other, and that's what Kirchhoff's voltage law just confirmed for us. So whatever energy we have on the left side of the equation, if that's our energy hill, would be used up on the other side. Um, so Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can apply through any loop. And how many loops do we see in this circuit? Well, we have the left loop, the right loop, we've got a middle loop, but then we could also, let me use a, a green, we also could use this as a loop. Um, I could also use this as a loop. I could also use, let me switch colors again. Uh, which colors? I don't have enough colors here. 
I could also um, use my entire outside as a loop. So any of these loops would be uh, useful for applying Kirchhoff's voltage loss. So what I'd like you to do is to, for part of your homework, is to apply. Uh, these are circuits that we've already done. And if you go back to the original circuits, and remember, the other thing I want you to know the circuits is calculate all the power in each one of the devices and then see if they match the voltage times Vs times Is equals, uh, if that equals your total power um, provided by the battery, which they should in each case. Um, but I want you to just confirm on your circuits, both your series and parallel circuits, um, just verify, go through a, um, uh, one or two or three loops on the different circuits and verify. And you should do some that are in parallel and some of the series. So I put two series ones here. But go back to your other, uh, your other work and just verify that any loop that you pick, all the voltage would add up to zero. And remember, if you're going with the voltage as you pass through the loop, you add it. If you're going against the voltage, you, you subtract it. Kirchhoff's current law. Here's what Kirchhoff's current law is. So here's our battery. We're going to be pushing some current out of this battery. The current is going to be, we're using negative charges. So I'm going to use negative charges for my current. The current's going to be moving away from my negative side, and it's going to, and that current will branch off when it hits this, this we call this a node or a junction. Um, and you notice the word node up here. Uh, at this point, the current will split. I'll have some current will go this way, and because we're in next to uh, one here, I'm just going to call this I1. Some of the current will split over this way. So this will continue down through here. I1 will continue. And it's also going through 6, so I1 and I6 are the same amount. And, and here's this I1 returning here. All right, and the question is what happens when it returns? In the meantime, this uh, current over here, it hits this node, and when it hits that node, it's got a split. Part of it's going to go this way. We'll call that, since we're going through 7, we'll call it I7. Part of it will go this way, and this is, this is I4, all right, because we have a, a 4 here. That's what we're going to call it. So, we have, uh, so our current in this middle branch here um, splits off into I7 and I4. I4 continues down. I7 continues around. Remember, the electrons, the charged carriers do not disappear. They do not get absorbed by our devices. They pass through the devices to do the work, and they come back around because they want to get back to that positive side of the battery. They're headed over to this positive side of the battery. They, they love to get to positive. Opposites attract. Electrons are attracted to the positive side of the battery. Now, what happens when they hit this junction? Well, they're going to join back together and come down this way. And so over here we have what? We have I4 plus I7 amount of current. All right? That's actually going through number 5, so we can call that I5. All right? So we've got this current I5 coming over here. All right? Now I5 and I1 hit this junction. What do they do? They're all headed towards the battery, so they're coming right over here. So this is I again. And this is, our, and this is going to the battery, so this is our source current. And it equals what? Well, it equals this I1 that came in right here, plus it equals I5. All right? Let's go back over to here. Same thing happens up here. In this junction, we had this current here split into I4 and I7. Well, that means this original current must have been I4 plus I7. Or we've seen this before. That's actually I5. So the current in this top part of the circuit matches the current down below here. All right? And if we back this up again, if we look at these two currents that split out of here, must equal, um, they must have come out from IS. And so IS must have been split into I1 and I5. So IS must equal I1 plus I5. And remember, this all happens because none of our electrons are lost. They always keep on moving through the circuit. They don't stop anywhere. They don't take a pause. They don't get lost. They don't get used up. They, they keep on flowing, just like water flows through pipes. If, it, if, a, if a junction in a pipe, part of the water will go one way, part will go the other way. Whichever the path of least resistance, more will go one way. 
compared to the path of higher resistance. So this, this junction here must be I1 plus I5, which came out of it uh, from up above. And you'll notice these match, all right, which did better because none of our current is lost. So whatever current left, our IS that left the circuit um, split up at this junction, came back around, came back around, and rejoined together to come back to our circuit. Now, what does this mean in terms of applying this as an equation? Uh, what we would do, for example, let me um, switch to a different color here. Um, let me pick a junction where we know all of our numbers. I, I, I pick, for any junction, we can do this. All right? So I'm going to pick this red junction over here. So what it says is the sum of the currents in any node, and we're going to do it, I don't know, call that node A, sum of the currents in node A, has to equal zero amps. All right, let's just do that. And what we do is we call currents going, if it goes into the node, I'm going to call them adding to that node is positive. And any current that goes out of the node, that's subtracting, and I'm going to call that those negatives. All right? So if I take a look at our diagram over here, um, I've got three currents. I've got two going in, one going out. So I've got I4s is going in. So I've got positive I4, and I've got I7 going into the node. So here's I7 going into the node, here's I4 going into the node. I4 plus I7, and then we've got to add in our third one at the node is, we called it I5, is eventually going through resistor 5. Um, but it's, an, it's going out of the node, so that gets a negative on it, minus I5, has to equal 0. Well, let's throw our negatives over the other side, see what we got. So I get plus I4 plus I7 equals, bring this over to the other side, plus I5. Well, no duh. We already figured that out using just logic of non-leaky water pipes. Um, so really, you can think of Kirchhoff's current law as the non-leaky water pipe uh, idea that we don't lose any current. It just comes to a node, and it splits up and moves its ways based on the, the resistance in each node, and then they join up afterwards and come back together again. That's what Kirchhoff's current laws. To apply Kirchhoff's current law, you got to write your write down this equation and plug in both sides. All right, plug in both sides and do the math, just like just as in any other formula. If if they ask you on an open response question to show that Kirchhoff's current law, or Kirchhoff's voltage law worked, you've got to write down some of the currents in a node equals zero, and then you've got to plug in, pick your node and, and do it. Same thing for voltage law. Some of the voltage is any loop equals zero volts and do the same. Last thing I, um, I want you to do, here's a, a slightly more complex circuit, but not a hard one. Um, go through this circuit and see if you can apply these different rules and see if you can work this out. I'll give you a hint on here. Um, the fastest way to do circuits like this is to take a look to see if you see anything in oh, that's only in series, which means only the same amount of current goes through it, or only in parallel, which means they have the same exact voltage going across them, and you can use your rules to replace them with an equivalent resistance and see if that helps you solve the circuit. And it turns out you can do that over and over again to make it a simpler and simpler circuit to, to uh, sort of uh, squish it into a single total resistance and come up with a starting point and then um, work, your way, work your way back through with that number that you solve for. So try it out. You can also try using Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law to see if that helps you solve this. Um, but give this problem a shot and we'll work through it together on Monday.